Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Paul Solt from Super Easy Apps. I wanna show you how to work with Test Flight. If you've never done this before, it can be a little bit intimidating. I've got my app down here, and I'm trying to get it onto the App Store or the Test Flight Center. And in order to do that, one of the little tricks that you have to do is you have to change a build number. This will allow you to skip going through a review period if you've already submitted something. If it's your first time, you're gonna to have to go through the review period, it's mandatory, but this will help. The thing that's important is you have to tab off of this for that text field to save. And then what we have to do is we have to switch over to a real device or a generic iOS device. When you do that, you can then go to the archive menu. Otherwise, this one's grayed out and you can't do it. So it's a little bit annoying. So I'll click on that. And when I do that, it's going to archive. And depending on how slow your machine is, that will take some time. Depends on how complex your app is too. Once we do that, we should see that this appears in the, what we call the organizer. That is this window here. And I'm just going to say new build for test flight. This is where you can write notes to yourself and then just click off of that so that it saves that. Then I will click the update to app store. Now the painful process is that if you have any mistakes with anything in your application, it usually takes a few minutes to go through. We have to agree to some new things here. I'm just gonna go with what it says. And sometimes what it's gonna do is gonna sign all our symbols, create the app, and sometimes this fails, and it fails either before it sends it to Apple or sometimes it fails after it sends it to Apple, which can be really frustrating because you don't know about any of the problems until waiting like five or 10 minutes or however long it takes to update the app to the store. And if it's like a two gigabyte app, good luck with that. It's gonna take a while. All right, so here we can upload it, and this is where it'll go to Apple, and if everything's good, you're good to go. If not, you're not, and you have to fix it. And so I, I had a bunch of issues with an older app that I was trying to just update for the app store and I'm still working on it. So if you do have problems, don't worry about it. I don't know why this is so slow. I'm on like the fastest internet. RIT has got like 56 megabytes down and 56 megabytes up. It's always super slow and it takes some time. So you're just gonna have to wait for it. We'll cross our fingers and hope that nothing's wrong. There shouldn't be anything wrong with this, but you never know because Apple's always changing things. So this is currently with Xcode 9. I'm with iOS 11. And all I want to do is show you how to work with test flight. So what we need to do is we have to submit a build because part of the, the thing that is difficult is when you submit the build, it's a little bit confusing how to share that build with your beta testers. So that's what we're gonna prep for. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how we can get to that next step. So we'll just wait for this and should finish soon. Looking good. If you like this video, if this is helpful, just click the like button. And if you want, you can subscribe Looks like my app was successfully uploaded. I can hit the done button. I can also click this link to go over to iTunes Connect. On iTunes Connect, I can jump into my app. So I'll just jump into all my apps and then I'm gonna look for my Brew Coffee app. Got a bunch of apps sort of in production. And once I'm in here, I can see all this stuff. Now, this is where I find it really confusing. I'm gonna pick up with this in the next video. So I'll see you in the next video and I hope that I helped you get your app to build. It's really important that you set it to a real device. So if we jump back over to Xcode just to review, you need to make sure that this is on generic iOS device or the menu options for the archive are going to be grayed out. And that's kind of annoying. All right, so I'll see you in the next video and I'll show you how to work with TestFlight on Apple's iTunes Connect. Catch you later.